concerning this day. Today's gospel tells of Jesus' temptation in the desert. His 40-day fast becomes the basis of our Lenten pilgrimage. In the early church, Lent was a time of intense preparation for those to be baptized at the Easter vigil. The catechetical focus of the meaning of faith is at the heart of our Lenten journey to the baptismal water of Easter. Hungry for God's mercy, we receive the bread of life to nourish us for the days ahead. We are pleased to have Pastor Mark Vance with us again this morning. Please welcome Pastor Vance and Mrs. Vance. Please stand as you are, you are able. Our opening hymn is number 104 in the Green Book, In the Cross of Christ by Glory. ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
God who is faithful and just <clears throat> will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. First reading announcement. Human beings were formed with great care to be in relationship with the Creator, creation, and one another. The serpents promised to the first couple that their eyes would be opened, led ironically to the discovery only that they were naked. Our first reading is from Genesis 2, verses 15 through 17 and verse 3. 1 through 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or, shall, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed big leaves together and made loin cloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Psalm 32.
Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will commend his armed angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve over only him. And the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Testing one two. Doesn't seem to be working. There's, yeah, there should be another microphone. Question. Who is in charge? Who's really in charge of this world and of our individual lives? That question is really at the heart of two of our scripture readings for this morning. Who is in charge? Who's really in charge? In our first lesson, Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden, which is sort of an earthly paradise. But they're unhappy. They want to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And God has told them, no, you shouldn't do that. But they go ahead and eat the fruit anyhow. And God gets mad. God says, wrong, you shouldn't have done that. I'm in charge, not you. Then in today's gospel lesson, Jesus goes out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and is tempted by Satan to do three things, to turn stones into bread, to jump down from the pinnacle of the temple, and to fall down and worship the devil. And each time Jesus says, no, I'm not going to do that. Wrong! God's in charge, not the devil. Who is in charge? Who's really in charge of the world and of our individual lives? Now, if you're anything like me and you listen to the news each day, you kind of wonder. You kind of wonder. My grandparents had an expression. They'd say, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And it sure seems as though that's happening. There's war, there's poverty, there's disease, there's a mass shooting almost every day. Terrible, terrible things are happening. And sometimes it seems almost as though the devil's going to win. But God isn't in charge. And then we come to church and we hear what is supposed to be the good news, the gospel. And in Lent, 
the theme is Jesus heading to a cross in Jerusalem where he's going to suffer and die. How could that be good news? How could that possibly be good news for an innocent, pure individual to suffer and die? It seems as though the devil's going to win. Years ago, probably 20 or so, I preached a Good Friday sermon with the title, What's So Good About Good Friday? And I noted that um, the word good is probably a corruption of the word God. So it's really God's Friday. But then I also pointed out that there are a couple different meanings for the word good. One meaning is the opposite of evil, good and evil, and it's hard to see much good in that sense coming out of Good Friday. But the other meaning of good is that it works the way it's supposed to work. And I talked about my first brand new car that I purchased. It was a Chevrolet. And it was a good car, in that it worked very, very well for five or six years. But then one day, all of a sudden, it would stop. It would turn itself off when I got to a stoplight or a stop sign. And it kept doing that. And I took it to one mechanic after another mechanic after another mechanic. I took it to the dealer. They worked on it for months. And finally, they got it to work the way it was supposed to work again. It was a good car once more. But I didn't trust it. So I sold the car and got another one. That's the way the Bible reads. You know, God created a good and perfect world that worked the way it was supposed to work. But then Adam and Eve ate that fruit of the forbidden tree because they wanted to be like God, knowing good from evil. And sin entered the world, and the world became all messed up. And God tried over and over again in the Old Testament, over and over again to fix it. But it just wouldn't be fixed. So finally we get to the New Testament and God sent his own son, Jesus Christ, into the world to suffer and die on a cross. And when he did, the world got fixed. Oh, there's still plenty of sin. There's still plenty of death. There's still plenty of chaos in this world. Things don't seem quite right. And yet, the good news of Easter morning is that at the end of all of this stuff, the world won't go to hell in a hand. God will triumph. God will win out. Everything will be okay once more. Each week I'm scheduled to uh, preach here. Whoever it is makes the, puts the bulletins together, emails me a copy of the bulletin, and I kind of glance over it. But the thing I'm usually most interested in is what hymns have been selected to accompany the service. And so I was, was pleased to see this last week that the hymn immediately after the sermon is A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 
Luther wrote that hymn himself, and we usually sing it the last Sunday of October, which is Reformation Sunday, and we sing it loud and proud because we're Lutherans, and we want to boo the Catholics. But it appropriately falls also on the first Sunday in Lent. There is a line in that hymn that goes, if they take our, if they take our house, goods, fame, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. God's in charge. Before we sing our next hymn, which Pat just mentioned, uh, a little explanation. Uh, the, uh, we got sort of a uh, different start on the opening hymn, but uh, we, uh, let me tell you what happens. Okay. Every four weeks, we have an organist come in, uh, Randall Worshipit, and he records four Sunday hymns for us. And uh, last, he came on Friday, and well, I'm old now, so I'm not thinking too well. What I did is that we were recording the hymns, and you press one button that says record, and then the first hymn you press start, and then it records. But then when you finish the first series of hymns, you press stop continue. Because if you press start, it starts, it erases everything, you have to start over again. <laughs> so you know what I did, I was about, we'd done three services, and I said to myself, what are you doing? Because I was pressing the wrong button all the time, erasing everything that went before it, and so we did record today's service, the hymns for this, but then he's coming in on Monday to record the next three Sundays because uh, of what I did. So I think I tell myself, well, I'm 80 years old now. I have a right to be sort of funny in the head. <laughs> but anyhow, as Pastor said, uh, we're going to sing A Mighty Fortress. But that's a hymn that is for all of us. And we are all, you know, to me, we're not Lutheran or Catholic or Methodist or Baptist or what have you. We all have been baptized in the one baptism. There's not a Lutheran baptism or a Catholic baptism or a Methodist baptism. There's only one baptism. There's only one church, that's the Christian Church of Jesus Christ, and we're all part of that. And I think the thing that is so encouraging in this day and age, when uh, we see churches being emptied and, and people going in the wrong direction, that uh, still we pull together. And even though, as I say so often, there may be fewer church members today, that's, we have maybe more Christians who really feel it in their heart and we're like the first church where people were few in number, but really dedicated to Jesus Christ and, uh, and God's will and so on. So we're going to sing the second hymn now, I find it for this, but I'm, I'm not sure, but we may find the end of the first hymn when uh, Mac presses the button. So we'll hear the, end, the last stanza of the first hymn, and then we'll go into a mighty fortress. Okay. Maestro? <laughs> There's no option to skip it. No, we could skip it, but uh, it's easier to do this. We'll hear the last stanza of the first hymn, and then we'll go into the second hymn with an introduction. We hope. <laughs> go ahead, press, press stop, continue.
there, there we go. Yes, 
Catholic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer. down and mend divisions within your church, Holy One. Bring together young and old, well and ill, rich and poor, as one body of Christ. Unite us in the worship of you. Be with all bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. All things come from you, great provider. Inspire us to use your gifts wisely and well as good stewards. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Raise up peacemakers, Almighty God. Pour out your spirit upon all nations that righteousness and peace might prevail in every place. We pray especially for our president and Congress, governor and legislature. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with those who are suffering. Comfort and sustain those who are distressed in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we now name in our hearts. Hear their cries and inspire us to respond to their needs as we are able. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with our St. Paul's congregation. Show us your will and use us for mission and witness as you lead us into a future known to you alone. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember the faithful departed who have gone before us, especially those who now need in our hearts. May light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Hear us according to your steadfast love, O God, and your great compassion bring us to resurrection and be birth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now with peace the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. Please remember, as we've talked already, um, we'll have our first devotional on uh, next Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, with a simple soup supper. And then you have a sign-up sheet? Yes, I have a sign-up sheet. So if anybody who's interested in making soup, please sign up. It'll be in the social hall after church. Fire sign, yes. You're good. Yes, I'm going to make my very special signature dish of uh, 10 canned soup. So <laughs> you buy all these cans. Uh, peas and so on, you pour it into thing with uh, tomato juice and it tastes pretty good, you know, so that's my, my specialty. 
Uh, that'll start at 6 p.m. and then we'll have a discussion about the previous week's devotions in the Lenten devotional. You all have it a Lenten devotional? Everybody? Okay, sure have that. Uh, and then we'll conclude with uh, prayer and a hymn or two uh, to, uh, to end the, the evening. But uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a different type of Lent, of Lent observance before we had a video or something like that. But this time there'll be sort of a, a discussion about what we've been reading and it might be uh, even more enriching for us. We'll see. Uh, for those who are accustomed to giving uh, money as a self-denial act during, during uh, Lent, uh, I would suggest you take a, an envelope, write how much you would put on it per day, uh, 50 cents, a dollar, whatever it might be, and uh, as you're able to fill that up and then give it, uh, present it to the church then on Easter. Then finally, uh, Dwayne Goff is still uh, dealing with health issues, uh, but hope to be back with us soon. He called me to, yesterday to let me know he would not be here with the family. And I know a, a car, uh, if you would like to do so, would cheer him uh, considerably. And his name is in the parish directory. And if you don't have a parish directory, uh, let me know and he'll give you one. And then Gloria uh, Hernandez, a uh, mom, uh, Susanna Ponce, is uh, having health problems herself. And uh, she's not the directory yet. Uh, we have her new directory in a couple, three years or so, I guess. But her address is in the fireside room on the uh, bulletin board. You know, she's the little lady who sits there with the family. So they're both having health, health problems. And I think we all know that if we, if we know people are thinking about us and praying for us, it boosts our spirits and just makes things all, all together better. So, good. All right, anything else? No. Billy, did you have? Well, um, yes. It's Emily's birthday, but she, she's going to try to make it in next week. She's having a hard day. She's having a hard day today? Well, let's, Emily, that's Billy's sister. Well, we, let's pray for Emily in her absence, okay? Let her know that we offer her. O oh God, our time is in your hand. Lord, we pray for your prayer on your servant Emily as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. How old will Emily be now? She'll be 33. 33, my goodness. I think I baptized her. <laughs> Walk in love as Jesus Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm.
carry the gibson of all times and all places. Offer praise and thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and make us to the fullness of grace to belong to the children of God. And so with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and set our unending hymn.
people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and be in your hearts by faith and faith.
United States, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.